story time while I do my makeup. So I decided to get my nose pierced on my birthday. Now this is not the first piercing that I have gotten done on my birthday. I had my first holes put in my ears on my ninth birthday. And then my second hole in my ear was my 19th or 20th birthday I waited until. I think that's right. Yeah. Also around my 18th birthday, I went and got my tongue pierced. I was young, crazy, wild. I don't have that anymore. So everybody calm down. <laughs> Oh, man. But I decided that I would do my nose on my 37th birthday. Maybe a mini midlife crisis? I don't think so. I just like to pierce stuff. I don't mind piercings. They don't bother me. And I always get excited to get something new. So, I researched piercings, what you should do ahead of time, what to do after. I researched what different sides of your nostril meant and there are spiritual meanings for um, each side or different things that are claimed with each side of your nose trying to decide which side I was going to pierce. I also um, asked my kids which side I should get pierced. Both my kids said the left. I'm glad they agreed because that would have been really difficult if they didn't. So I knew where I was going to go to get the piercing done because that's where I've gone to get a few other things done. Um, ears up here, my tongue, my belly button when I was young and wild and crazy. Um, and I've actually done this one twice and the same place has done all of these and I've always had really good results, never had any issues, knock on wood. So I decided I would go to the same place. So, not gonna lie, had a little bit of anxiety about getting a new piercing. Pain doesn't really bother me, it's just the anxiousness of the unknown, right? So I walked in and he said, okay. He was like, I'll get you done, you know, you, you pull in and you're like so relieved, you're like, okay, good. I'm here, I'm gonna get it done, it's gonna be over fast, all good. It'll be over in just a few minutes. Well, then he says, I have to set the autoclave to eight minutes so you can wait. So for eight minutes, which I'm thankful they use an autoclave, obviously, but for eight minutes, I'm like, oh. So for eight minutes, I waited, torturing myself, getting so anxious, palms sweating, all of that. So we went into the room that has like a what looks like an exam table for you to lay on. And I caught a glimpse of the big needle. I was very nervous about that part. Now I'm a nurse. I will stick people all day long. I enjoy sticking people with needles, but when they're coming at me, it's a whole different ball game. I don't like that. So the guy marks your nose where he's gonna do it with some ink. Let you look in a mirror, make sure it's good. Um, so then I had to lay down on the table. So anxious. And he was so great though. This guy, he taught, if you need his name, like if you're local and want to go do something like that, um, let me know and I'll give you his name. He was so friendly. He was like funny. He was cracking jokes, like making me at ease. I don't know if that would be for everybody, but it definitely worked for me. And it was over like that. And it was like no pain, mainly just pressure. So I picked my kids up from school and they didn't even notice. Of course, you know, like I'm facing forward and they're in the back seat. So they didn't even notice until I told them. Then my son flipped out and started screaming and crying that I had went. <laughs> I don't know why. After a few minutes, he was totally fine. And he said he liked it. Okay. Thank you. Later in the day, as I showed to my husband and my dad and, you know, my mom, mom's not a fan. It is what it is. That's what mothers are for, right? But all three generations of men had the same question. And I guess I hadn't really thought about it. How are you going to pick your nose? 
I guess I'm not. But that was their biggest concern. Not did it hurt. How are you going to pick your nose? Okay. At the end of the day, I'm glad that I did it. It did not hurt. The anxiety building up was the worst part of all the things that go through your mind ahead of time. That was the worst. So, I would do it again because it wasn't that painful. It wasn't that bad. If you want to do something, go do it. Don't let anybody talk you out of doing something you want to do. I've always been like that. I think if somebody tries to talk me out of something, it pushes me more towards doing it. Probably not a good quality trait, actually. Also, if you're thinking about doing something like that and you need somebody to talk you out of doing it, I'm not the one. I am not the one to talk you out of doing anything like that. So I can't help. But if you want to do something like that and you need a cheerleader, I'll be your cheerleader. I will totally cheer you on if it's something that you want to do for yourself, not for anybody else. I'll be there. Need somebody to hold your hand while you go? Need somebody to go take pictures? Do all that? I got you. Let me know. So, there we go. There's my little story. And I don't regret it one bit. It didn't hurt. If you're thinking about doing it, just do it. No big deal. I'll see y'all next time.